So what's going on y'all, it's the boy Vincent, repping the boy Vincent Fitness, we're back again today with another YouTube video. And the topic of today is going to be how to stay motivated, or at least stay disciplined. Now, personally, this is something that I've always kind of never had a problem with, me personally. Like, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm Superman or Captain America. But usually when I can just say, you know what, my diet or bulking is over, time to start the diet, I never really have a problem transitioning in either direction, pause, or the fact that, you know, I can sit here and say, you know what, uh, I'm going to start doing, let's say, for example, this ab exercise after leg workout, for example, every day. For me personally, that was never an issue because in terms of fitness, I have an emotionally compelling reason to do so. And that's going to be the main barometer or the predictor or the measuring stick of how or whether or not you're going to stick to something that you want to do. It's basically your emotionally compelling reason. Like, why do you want to do this? So for the biggest thing for me was, was college, for example. Guys, for the most part, there's going to be so many classes you take in college you don't want to go to. A lot of them, sometimes they'll be at 8 a.m. or 6 a.m. And you're, you're in the university for me, for example, so I didn't live at home. So it's your first time you're away from home. Your mom don't got to wake you up or your dad got to wake you up. You don't have to be forced to be in class. So you're going to go to class or whether or not you won't go to class. You, it's all based on you, but you have to have that emotionally compelling reason. So let's say you really, since you were a kid, you want to be a doctor. It's going to be a lot easier for you to go to the certain classes you don't want to go to because you're emotionally connected to that end game, which is becoming a doctor. So you understand, all right, I'm going to have to take, I don't know, art history in the first year of college, even though I don't want to, I'm not interested in this. I'm going to do my best in this class, get a good grade so I can move on to finishing my, getting my doctorate degree, you know, eventually, however long that takes. So that's one of the main reasons what I noticed why people never finish college because they only really go because they, you know, their parents want them to go. They go because, you know, hey, you're, you're, they're getting pressured from their parents. You have to go to college. And I used to see this, man, so much, especially my freshman year because you're in the dorms. But there was people I met that they literally never went to class or they were failing all their classes. And then after, you know, one or two semesters, you never saw, you know, they moved back home. You never saw them again. Because they were only there because they, they didn't want to be there. Their parents wanted to be there. They didn't really have an emotionally compelling reason or an attachment to the outcome. But for me, in my, for example, in my case, I didn't really like to go to certain classes. But I understood, okay, once I get this stupid piece of paper, it's going to make it a lot easier to get certain jobs or whatever. Like, for example, my job now, I work in logistics, but I'm also an online trainer. So in logistics, literally when you have this stupid piece of paper, you're officially, you can say, okay, I'm worth more so you can pay me more. Or let's say I went and got my master's, it's the same way. But in reality, you know, when I worked at Port Everglades, for example, we were, I remember we taught a younger guy how to do the job because as he's connected to the boss, because you don't even really need a degree for most of these jobs. Unless you're about to be like a doctor or an engineer, there's no real point to even go to college, in my opinion. If, you, if you're going to be like, let's say, a software engineer, you can do this stuff online. They got courses online now. You can do it all for free. You don't even got to waste the four years, the tuition for the four years in college. Unless you're about to, let's say, you're going to be an architect, for example. That's kind of important because you have to understand mathematics and all these different things. But for the most part, you don't really need to. You know, I'm going off on a tangent. But what I'm saying is... You know, most people don't really finish college because of this. They have no emotionally compelling reason. Same thing with a diet. Guys, usually the only reason people actually take their diet serious or a diet serious is because they get to a point where they have some sort of health scare. So let's say for your whole life, people are telling you, man, you got to eat healthy or otherwise you're not going to feel good. Ah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's my body, my choice. I can do whatever I want. Usually, and then up until they have a damn heart attack, and the doctor says, okay, if you don't make changes, you're going to die. Because you have, we're so close to death, now you have an emotionally compelling reason to finally lose that damn weight. So then that's when they take their weight serious. So that's why I always laugh when I look at these comments, or at least these pages, when people are under like Taco Bell or McDonald's, and they say, hey, this is poisonous, this food's going to kill you, and then people attack them for this. And then they say, well, it's my body. If I have a heart attack, whatever. Okay, see them in 30 years if they make it that long. And when they have a serious health scare. Now, are they going to continue on that path? More than likely not. Because now they have an emotionally compelling reason. Most people don't want to lose their life over some over a damn food. If they got to cut this food out or cut that food out. But 
I say all of this because for the most part, most people, man, they, they're not going to be able to stick to certain things because they don't have an emotionally compelling reason to do so. And this is, it's a really sad thing, but you need to learn how to kind of get through certain things, even if you don't have that the reason to do so. So, for example, let's say your job. Guys, it's, it's today is Sunday. Tomorrow I have to work, even though I don't have to go to the office. Part of you is like, man, I don't want to do this. But at the end of the day, you got bills to pay. You got food to buy. You have a reason to do so. But if you don't give it your all, it's going to show up in your work. And most importantly, customers are going to notice it. They're going to notice the fact that you're not really loving this work. But on the other hand, you know, for some of you guys, if you work in an office, you'll have these people who are like, they, they do all that overtime, they do all this crazy stuff because they really do have an emotionally compelling reason. They probably really, really love that job and they like what they're doing. So it shows in their work. Like with me with fitness, because I really love to work out. Like I've been working out nonstop, like at least five times a week since 2000, I want to say 2012, 2013 was around the time I really took it serious. So at least over, at least close to or at least over 10 years now I've been doing this and it's I just love it it's, it's never gonna change like I never literally today I went to go work on hamstrings and I was literally like excited when I woke up in the morning because I'm like yeah go to the gym gym time but that's the reason why I'm able to stick to it because I have an emotionally compelling attachment to it and you see this with relationships Guys, there's certain instances. I've been in a long-term relationship, so I know what it was like to, you know, sometimes you guys, the girl get on your nerves, you guys have an argument, or maybe you kind of not, like, as super attracted to her as usual, and then you, you know, you'll notice you're getting some choosing signals from other women, but at the same time, you're emotionally attached to this person, and you understand if you were to do something, you're going to hurt this person a lot, so you don't do it, so that's, you know, you know what I mean, like, you have a, a note of emotional attachment, so you're not going to act in a certain way because you understand the outcome. And this is what I need you to understand is, guys, you have to have a duty to certain tasks in order to achieve certain goals that you have in your life. So let's say you want to learn a language. Like, for example, with me, I learned how to speak German. You're going to stick to certain things. Let's say you do 30 minutes of Rosetta Stone a day. So me personally, I would do an hour of Rosetta Stone before the gym every day no matter how I was feeling, because that was a way for me to kind of slowly learn the language and not really do put too much effort into it. It, did, it wasn't really fun, guys. You're doing Rosetta Stone. You have to pronounce the words. I'm saying stuff wrong. I'm constantly getting the error message. You know, my the, my family at the time, like, why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. They're not really supporting you in that goal. But at the same time, I understood if I do this, then it's going to give me a skill being able to speak in another language, which will help me live in another country, which I'm doing now. So yeah, that's all I got to say today, guys. We're going to keep it, cut it off around here. Damn, we're eight minutes now. Didn't even notice it went that fast. But yeah, make sure to uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment. And as we usual, as usual, as we always say here, make sure to control the negative, focus on the positive. It's your boy, Navoy, repping the boy, Vincent Fitness. I'm out.